All right, welcome everybody. Happy Saturday. Glad you guys could join us. Uh, today we are learning about Jordan, okay? Uh, beautiful country, lots of exciting stuff to do. So we're gonna learn about that. Um, again, if you haven't registered, remember under Certificate Workshop, all the courses are here. Next week we are doing Windstar Cruises and the Bahamas. So hopefully you guys can um, join us for that. Uh, pre-register. Um, let me go ahead and mute. Sorry. All right. Uh, there we go. All right. Um, so we will have our list of what we're going to be doing next month. Um, and again, maybe I need to hire an assistant to clean up my list because, um, as you know, on my, I put these on my YouTube, right? And then, um, and then they were supposed to be transferred over, but my assistant um, uh, has, she handles my vouchers too. So I think uh, she's been kind of busy with that. So uh, we haven't been updating our um, our total list, okay? What would we do yesterday? Princess, right? Um, Princess hotels or something. Yeah, so I need to add that. Yeah, my- money. Somebody that would help. <laughs> <laughs> who your daughter <laughs> either her or me <laughs> okay yeah because what we need to do is go through the uh my youtube and then go into this list yeah somebody had a question um i'll show you and update it i, I work cheap okay <laughs> perfect i may have i may have you do that because uh, i think we need to update it because and put like the time mm -hmm. the dates so we know and then maybe you can help keep track and say, okay, next month we need to do this one, you know? So, I can for sure. Okay. I'd be more than happy to. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, and somebody had a question. Um, if you want to unmute or whatever, but right here, this. No, is it's okay. I was just going to say that I'm an assistant too, but you already got somebody <laughs> now. So that's great. <laughs> oh, thank you. See cooperation. Look at that. Um, this is the 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 one that I was talking about right here. Um, so it's a, a list. And again, all the, can you guys see my screen? Um, it's a list of all the different types yes. of um, programs that you can do these trainings on. And again, guys, remember, you can do these trainings on your own, but they're kind of fun when we do them together. Um, and then down here, we had them in alphabetical order, my YouTube, and then the training course. Some of them are out of date, um, and we try to do these like every year, right? We try to keep up or do new ones or whatever. So that's like Marriott. We did it February of last year, I think, or something. So we need to kind of get that updated because for new people, um, if you've already done Marriott, and as you see here, oh yeah, February of last year. So we're a little behind. Um it's a four, four or five course one that we do. Definitely worth it though, because of the perks and stuff. Um, and again, guys, the reason we do these is again, to make us better travel agents. You wanna learn about a a a AMA wet waterways, American Queen voyages. You wanna learn about Escaret um, to make you a better travel agent to, to service your client, right? That's the main reason we do these. Um, again, as I said, you guys can do them on your own, but why not do them together? Um, this sheet is actually on this certificate workshop marketing ideas that um, is open to everybody. Um, so again, um, uh, uh, Linda volunteered to, to update it for me because as you can see, you know, some of them haven't been updated for a long time. Um, I think the last one was in February. So all these trainings that are on my YouTube, we have to move over there, okay? So we just copy and put it on this list. And then that way, again, if you missed Sandals Expert One or you missed LGBTQ, look at Linda's thing there. There's, <laughs> there's me. <laughs> Um, so we're going to move all these over there, but again, you can find them on my YouTube. Again, if you, you know, Hey, I, I want to go, or I have somebody that wants to go to on um, your know, railways or whatever. So, you know, maybe type in rail and you'll see we rail Europe. We did Rocky Mountaineer. We did Switzerland. So these will give you all trainings on railways. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's, it's just a great resource. And again, we do these together. This one's another one, Apple Leisure Group. We did this, as you see, 
what is it like 19? Yeah. 19 courses. Crazy. Right. So, um, uh, we have to rename these because like this may be Disney. This one may be RIU and Disney. Yeah. You can go to Disney travel agents, but you can also go here now and add universal in one package. Okay. So again, lots of different resources. So we'll get those all updated for you guys. Okay. Uh, cabins. Yeah. I don't know if we have one on cabins. And again, um, I know we have different vendors for cabins and stuff. So uh, we can check. Um, let's check up here just real quick. And again, hopefully everybody's registered and we'll get started in just one moment. So let's see if there's any trainings on cabins, special needs at sea. Where am I headed now? Yeah, I think these are kind of more um, like cruise cabins and stuff. So um, I will ask my other assistant. We're actually partners. Yeah, no. I don't We're think not... we've done a. I don't think we've done a training on like the cabins. I know that we have that huge list of all of the different right. places to go for cabins, but I don't think we've done a training on it yet. Yeah, I so, was yeah. looking for specifically for in um what is it Colorado because I know we do cabins, but it's all in Tennessee for uh, Gatlinburg. Yeah, I got um. Let's see. Yeah, we've got a huge list. Um, how to book that's Royal Caribbean. Um, cabins, here's one that uh, we've got a big list of different ones. So yeah, like you said, a lot of them are, um, but here's that's Myrtle Beach, Tennessee, Great Smoky Mountains. That's over in the East Coast, right? Um, Tennessee, Florida. You can also in our um, vendors like Disney and stuff, right? I mean, um, Expedia Tap. I was just going to tell able to you, click Marnie, on, on cabins. Um, let me just show Marnie, you, Marnie. I just found some under Expedia Tap, and I was really surprised they do have lots of cabins. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Remember, guys, you can do a search, even though we don't do like Airbnbs and stuff. Uh, Marriott, we're not doing until next um month and we're doing them on saturday so this we're finishing up the one this this time um also remember package rates do that so let's just say colorado uh denver right now just just to see save your client 20 percent book their air separate and now you're saving them 20 percent but right down here filters it should give you the opportunity to pick like cabins apartment it, did. it just was in a lot of apps. okay yeah right here condos cottages vacation homes bed and breakfast so yeah a lot of times you can do the search and it'll pull up the different things available so so just just use your search bars all right guys everybody good let's go ahead and get started um again we're on ott Make sure it is the UK flag that you're in, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Can you guys see my screen, and is everybody here? We have five courses today that we're doing, okay? Uh, discover the wonders of Jordan. Welcome to our course on Jordan, a land of timeless beauty, rich culture, cultural heritage. Jordan is a captivating destination where ancient history and modern vibrancy intertwine to offer a unique, unforgettable experience from the majestic ruins of Petra to the serene waters of the Dead Sea, Jordan is a country that promises adventure, discovery, and profound insights. In this course, you will embark on a virtual journey through Jordan's most iconic landmarks, delve into its storied past, and explore the vibrant culture that defines the Middle Eastern gem. You will gain a deeper understanding of the Jordan's historical significance, its diverse landscapes, and the warm hospitality of its people. All right. Um, again, if you guys have any questions or concerns or need help, uh, put in the chat box to everyone just so we can make sure you get your answers. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and click on Get to Know Jordan. And again, it's going to make me sign in again. Here we are. Close, get to know Jordan. All right. So as you know, it pops up again. If you have your pop-up blocker on, it won't pop up. So make sure you do that. Uh, I think I put the sound on. Yes. Okay. 
So well, let's start the lesson. Everybody good? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Perfect. All right. Um, so the ancient, and again, I apologize ahead of time for any mispronunciations. <clears throat> the ancient city of Petra chiseled into the cliffs of the Nabataeans <laughs> over a millennium ago, often the em em emblematic image of Jordan. Yet Petra is but a single gem in a country replete with wonders. Jordan, um, a historical crossroads between maritime and terrestrial routes, harmonizes the divergent uh, beauty of the Middle East. The Hashmi, Hashmi Kingdom of Jordan invites travelers to experience its varied landscapes, fertile and shifting terrain of the Jordan Valley, the solemn grandeur of the desert's vast canyons, and the revitalizing embrace of the Dead Sea. The nation of Jordan was established by King Abd Abdullah uh, I following the First World War. His legacy was carried on by his grandson, the late King Hussein, who governed for nearly half a century before his passing in 1999. Today, King uh, Abd Ab Abdullah, sorry, Abdullah II presides over a country that has blossomed into a bastion of tranquility, stability, and progress, attracting, attracting visitors from around the globe. As 2024 unfolds, Jordan celebrates the Silver Jubilee of King Abdullah II, making a uh, time of marking a time of reflection on the country's past achievements and aspirations for the future. Uh, Jordan is renowned for its generous sun and mild climate throughout the year. Spring and autumn offer gentle warmth with temperatures typically between 15 to 21 degrees Celsius, 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And springtime may bring occasional rain. During the summer, days are warm, averaging around 32 degrees Celsius, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, while nights provide a cooler respite. Uh, the peak of the sunshine and dry conditions occur in July and August, particularly in regions like Amman and the Jordan Valley. Uh, desert areas can experience highs around 38 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Winter stretches from November to March. And while it can be chilly, snowfall is a rarity. Um, Aqaba uh, offers a cozy winter getaway, maintaining warmer weather compared to the north. Overall, around three quarters of Jordan has a moderate climate, characterized by scant, scant water rainfall throughout the year. All right. Get to know Jordan. Jordan experiences a diverse climate, hot summers, cool winters. Peak tourist season typically coincide with spring, could be test questions, uh, March to May, and autumn, September to November. When's the best time to go? Peak season, March to May or September to November. Offering pleasant temperatures for exploration, it's important to note that Jordan operates on a GMT plus three, ensuring smooth coordination of travel schedules across different time zones. Official language of Jordan, Arabic. Uh, though English is widely spoken in tourist areas, local currency is the Jordanian dinar, J-O-D, and credit cards are accepted in most establishments, Familiarizing yourself with currency exchange rates and basic Arabic uh, phrases can enhance the overall travel experience for your client. Jordan is conveniently accessible via major airports such as Queen Alia International Airport Amman. Providing easy connections to destinations worldwide, travelers can also enter via land borders from neighboring countries offering flexibility and transportation options. Easiest way to reach downtown Amman from the airport is by taxi. Journey takes approximately 30 to 45 minutes, and the fare is about 15 JDs, equivalent to around $22. However, shuttle buses to the city center bus station are also available, leaving the airport every half hour. Beyond its iconic landmarks, Jordan offers a plethora of unique experiences for travelers from camping under the stars in the desert to exploring ancient ruins off the beaten path. Possibilities are endless. I encourage your clients to immerse themselves in local culture through culinary adventures, traditional music performances, and hands-on experiences with local artisans. And now we are on our first test, okay? So hopefully everybody is ready to go. Who established the nation of Jordan following the First World War? King Hussein, King Ab Abdullah I, or King Abdullah II? 
Was it Hussein and then them? What do you guys think? Hussein. Thank you. That's what I think. Let's see. Nope. Nope. It's wrong. So is it Abdullah one? Nope. That's wrong. Oh, no, it's Abdullah two. <laughs> Sorry, I tried to get in there before you clicked it. <laughs> it's okay. At least it lets us rechoose again. Not bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. No thanks. thanks, guys. All right. What is the emblematic image of Jordan Upper associated with? The Jordan Petra. Valley, the Petra, or the Amman? It's Petra. Petra. Yay. What two seasons are the peak tourist time? Didn't I call it? I called it, right? Yep. Was it spring and autumn? Summer and autumn? You called the months. But... Spring and autumn. Spring and autumn. Spring and autumn. Spring and autumn. Thank you. What's the local currency? The Jordanian, Jordanian dinar. Very good. And the time zone. That was plus three. three. Right. Yep. Yay. All right. That was an easy one. Except the first one. <laughs> 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 All right, everybody good? Yes. Yeah. All, right. All right, now we're going to learn about major cities and then culture and religion, geography, and local experiences. All right, Amman, a city that unfolds across 19 hills, also known as Jabal's, is a blend of ancient tradition and modern modern modernity. Modernity. <laughs> You can always tell when I screw up because I repeat myself and then I make myself even more of a screw up. All right. Serving as the capital of both the ancient and the contemporary Hashemite kingdom of Jordan, once named Philadelphia during its Greco-Roman past, Amun's history stretches back to the Iron Age. It has evolved from a small settlement known as Rabat Amun to a bustling metropolis with a population that now exceeds 2 million. Its historic heart is distinguished by stone houses and winding streets, offering a rich tapestry of historic sites that span the centuries. The city's historic layers are revealed through its many um, archaeological sites with excavations unveiling structures from different eras, such as Hellenistic, Roman, and e um, early Islamic periods. Uh, these include the majestic citadel, which holds remnants like the Temple of Hercules, the Umayyad Palace, and the impressive Roman theater. This ancient theater, capable of seating around 6,000 spect spectators, remains a centerpiece for cultural events. Additionally, the Odeon, a smaller theater with a capacity of 500, is still in use for performances. For those interested in delving deeper into the city's past, Amun's museums are treasure troves of history and culture. Jordan Museum, the Folklore Museum, and the Museum of Popular Tradition are key venues that showcase the region's heritage. To learn more about um, what you can do in Amman, the following link lists 99 different things you can experience in the city. So again, you can click on that. It'll pop up into a different window. It should. And then, um, again, this is something you may want to save, pull some information off it when you get your certificate. Um, of things to do, right? Focus on, you know, uh, people that are adventurous, fo focus on families, etc. So hopefully you'll pull up, but uh, check back in a minute. There we go. Okay, so here, um, save this on your, you know, laptop, your your back, um, your homepage, etc. Um, but lots and lots of things to do. Okay. All right. Next. Uh, discover the allure of asphalt, a uh, treasure tucked away in Jordan, uh, ripe with stories from the past just waiting to be unearthed. This city is not only a cradle of historical uh, significance, but also a designated UNESCO World Heritage Site, one of six in Jordan. A testament to its outstanding cultural architectural legacy, wonder the lam lambering theme pathways flanked by Ottoman era edifices, Homes adorned with in intricate stonework and majestic mosques and churches that echo the city's eclectic past. As Salt is a city where the old meets the new, offering a tapestry of experiences that showcase the soul of Jordan. Cities of ambiance is enriched by its people's hot hospitality, savory delights of its traditional cuisine, and the compelling stories encapsulated within its heritage sites. Visitors are encouraged to delve into the genuine Jordanian way of life as um, in Assel. 
Here, every alleyway um, and building spins a yarn of cities res resilient and alert. It's a place where the narrative of history is interwoven with the vibrancy of contemporary life, inviting one and all to partake in its enduring legacy. Urban, uh, ranking as Jordan's second largest city after Amman, stands as a pivotal link in the transportation network connecting Jordan to Syria. Bustling with the energy of its youthful inhabitants and the vibrant scene typical of university town, uh, Urbrid uh, hosts renowned educational institutions such as the Jordan University of Science and Technology, JUST, and Yarmouk University. Cultural explorations in Ibrid are, um, can lead you to the Museum of Jordanian Heritage and the Jordan Natural History Museum, offering insights into the nation's rich past. In its earlier days, known as Arabella, Urbid um, was celebrated for producing exquisite wines, among the finest in the ancient world. With the advent of Islam, the city's production pivoted towards olive oil. Today, Urbid's geographic position in the northern part of the country makes it a perfect base for travelers venturing to the historic treasures of the northern Jordan Valley and other revered sites like Jarash, Umkes, uh, Palia, and Ajlan. <laughs> All right, Jarash uh, stands as a premier historical destination in Jordan, rivaled only by the splendor of Petra. It is distinguished by an impressive continuum of human settlement that extends over 6,500 years. Jarash reached its zenith under Roman governance, and today it's lauded as one of the world's most well-preserved examples of Roman provincial city. Hidden by sand for centuries and meticulously unearthed and reconstructed in the last seven decades, Jarash offers a vivid tableau, um, tableau, tableau? Oh, that's right, of grand <clears throat> Roman city planning found across the Middle East. The site features a network of paved streets lined with columns, majestic temples atop hills, grand theaters, expansive public squares, and grand plazas, alongside vast fountains and fortified perimeter with towers and gates. Yet beneath its pronounced great Greco-Roman facade, Jarish holds a complex identity where Eastern traditions interlace with Western influences. City's cultural fabric reveals an intricate weave of architecture, um, spiritual beliefs, and uh, linguistic heritage. Illustrating the sim sim symbiosis between the mighty Greco-Roman civilization of the Mediterranean and the time-honored customs of the Arab Orient. <clears throat> Embarking on the ancient king's highway from Amman, a route imbued with 5,000 years in history, offers a passage through the sacred landscapes of the Holy Land. Journey unveils the storied city of Madaba, the city of mosaics. Famed for its uh, resplendent Byzantine and Umayyad mosaic art. Here lies the acclaimed 6th century uh, mosaic map of Jerusalem and the Holy Land, an intricate composition featuring the 2 million colored stones that illustrate the indolating hills, valleys, and the urban settings stretching to the Nile Delta. In Madaba, not only the Church of the Virgin and the Apostles and the architect logical museum are replete with mosaic masterpieces depicting a vibrant panorama of plants, animals, and scenes from both legend and daily life, but the city serves as a gateway to the revered Mount Nebo. It is here that visitors can stand atop the same mountain where, according to tradition, Moses viewed the promised land, an experience that is both historical and profoundly uh, spiritually profound. Site also offers its own ancient um, mosaics complementing Madaba's rich tapestry of art with panoramic views that extend across the Jordanian landscape, encapsulating both the terrestrial and the divine. Today, Madaba and Mount Nebo present a journey through time, preserved through the artistry of mosaics and the sanctity of ancient narratives. Home of the famous Karak Castle, the Karak Fortress is a labyrinthine expanse of stone arch halls and winding corridors. With the most well-preserved sections hidden underground, accessible via a substantial door, inquire at the ticket office for access. The castle's grandeur lies not only in the aesthetic, but also in the embodiment of the Crusaders' architectural prow prowess, prowess in military design. 
Park is infamous for housing Renald de Chatelain, a figure notorious for his duplicity and cruelty, which remains unparalleled. Following the death of Baldwin II, his young leprous son uh, sought peace with Saladin. However, upon the son's death with, without an heir, Renald came into power by marrying Stephanie, the affluent widow of Karek's slain regent. In a defiant act, Reynolds bre breached the peace of, um, with Saladin, prompting the latter's forceful return. This led to the downfall of the Crusader domain of the Battle of Hatton. The Ronald captured, um, with Renald captured and executed by Saladin, signal, signal, signaling a turning point into the Crusader era. Uh, later, the fortification of Karak was expanded, incorporating a new western section constructed by Ayyubids and Mamluks, adding to the fortress's historical architectural complexity. Don't you like learning about history? My God, these are long ones. All right. <clears throat> Agaba, the gateway to the Red Sea in Jordan is renowned for its vibrant coral reefs, multitude of sea creatures, cities historical, a pivotal, the city historically a pivotal maritime trading point linking the Red Sea with the Far East is now a sought after destination for those who delight in scuba diving, adore sandy beaches, or simply wish to bask in the sun, all the while being surrounded by rich historical sites. The Aquaba Castle, also known as Mameluk Fort, stands as a prominent historical stru structure in Aqaba. Restored by the Mamelukes in the 16th century, the fort's distinctive square shape is accentuated by its semicircular towers, and it features inscriptions detailing the Islamic din dynasty's later era. Archaeological efforts at Ayla, an ancient settlement dating back to the 7th century, have revealed substantial artifacts of early Islamic city design, complete with a city gate, protective walls, and towers, buildings, and a place of worship. The area's museum offers an extensive collection of local ant antiquities, um, including ceramics and old coins. Furthermore, Aqaba houses a museum dedicated to Sharif Hussein bin Ali. King Ab Abdullah II, great-grandfather, enriching the city's connection to the Jordanian royal heritage. Another remarkable historical feature is what is believed to be the oldest church in the region, made of mud bricks showcasing Aqaba's Ak extensive historical depth. Aqaba is distinguished by its array of over 28 diving sites. So again, get that information out for those divers. You want to focus on that niche market, including a unique underwater museum and famed Japanese garden dive spot. Beautiful, right? City also represents modern advancements with the Saraya Akaba and Isla Oasis developments, boasting water parks, world-class golf courses, and five-star hotels, providing an array of activities for the families to indulge in. All right, and then Wadi Rum, often described as Yacht Vast, Echoing and Godlike by T. E. Lawrence <clears throat> remains a monument to the awe-inspiring power of nature, mostly unsullied by human touch, shaped by the elements. Its landscape boasts an impressive collection of rock formations with peaks soaring as high as 5,741 feet, presenting an enticing challenge to mountain climbing enthusiasts. Uh, this nature preserve is a sanctuary for those seeking to immerse themselves in its sprawling solitude, wander through the deep canyons, encounter rock engravings that have withstood the test of time for 4,000 years amidst a host of other extraordinary nature, natural features. Also known by its um, ev 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 evocative uh, name, Valley of the Moon, uh, Wadi Rum is steeped in history of the headquarters of Prince Faisal bin Hussein and T.E. Lawrence during the historical historic um, Arab revolt of World War I. These tales are in, inextricably woven into the fabric of the region, which has earned its place as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The quintessential way to experience the essence of Wadi Rum is to delve into its heart. Adventure seekers can hire a 4x4 and guide to explore the desert's iconic landmarks. Alternatively, a camel trek um, offers a more traditional and introspective journey through this majestic landscape. Wadi Rum also boasts a cinematic pedigree, 
having served as a backdrop for numerous films with its um, otherworldly terrain featured in blockbusters like Indiana Jones, The Martian, Transformers, Aladdin, and many other of uh, others, highlighting its universal appeal and otherworldly allure. All right, Petra Jordan's archaeological crown jewel and its most acclaimed attraction is a testament to the ingen ingenuity of Nabataeans. Nabataeans. An enterprising Arab civilization that flourished in southern Jordan over two millennia ago. Esteemed for its advanced culture, monumental architecture, and intricate system of waterworks, Petra stands as a monument to this sophisticated engineering artistry. It is not only a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but also celebrated as one of the new seven wonders of the world. The historic nexus, once home to Nabataeans, Edomites, and Romans, showcases the collective genius of these cultures and converged to forge an enduring legacy. Petra was crucial, uh, was a crucial stopover for caravans carrying precious goods like incense, silks, spices, and other treasures from afar, underscoring its importance as a cultural and trading hub in, in antiquity. Whew. What ancient name was Amun known by during the Greco-Roman past? Rabathamon, Philadelphia, Arabella. Philadelphia. Philadelphia, correct. Asalt is recognized as a UNESCO, UNESCO World Heritage Site for its mosaics, Roman architecture, Ottoman era edifices. The mosaics, was, right? No, it was the Ottoman. It was the Otto Ottoman? Mm hmm Thank you. What notable feature does Madaba offer that includes a 6th century mosaic map of Jerusalem and the Holy Land? Is it the Church of the Virgin, Mount Nebo, or Archaeological Museum? I think it was the Church of the Virgin. What is it? Okay. I think it was the Church of the Virgin, I think. No, wait, yeah. Uh, yeah. Church of the Virgin. Okay, you guys got that? All right. Um, Wadi Rum, UNESCO World Heritage Site, also known by which ev evocative name? Valley of the Kings, Oasis of Peace, or Valley of the Moon? The Valley of the Moons. I think we just heard that. I what think. is it? The Valley of the Moons, I think. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're, you're, it's like you're muffled. It's a, thank you. Am I, am I really soft? Well, now, yeah, I mean, now it sounds a little better, but yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's okay. I just have to, you know, it's, it's, what, what? I can't hear it. <laughs> and I don't oh. know if it's just me, but, but thank you. You, you got us through. All right. Now we're going to learn about culture, religion. Everybody good? Did everybody pass that? Again, we try to make sure before moving on. That was really fascinating. I never even really thought Jordan would be so fascinating. I thought it was hotter also. Didn't you guys? <laughs> I know. I didn't know anything about this. So. Yeah, I thought Jordan was hot too. <laughs> well, Marty and I both live in the desert. So we've been <laughs> encounter encountering some pretty extreme this summer. All right, let's see. So culture and religion. All right. Still here in a way, fascinating. <laughs> I know it's it's, it's a, a long one, but you know, not very exciting. It's it's interesting though, right? Like I said, it's it's kind of like going to a history class, right? All right. Um, and some of these trainings are really good, really informative. And, you know, again, some go through the history and, and all the the past stuff to kind of get you, you know, um, familiar. Anyway, culture and religion. Jordan places great importance on its diverse population, ensuring the cultural rights of all its citizens. People of various ethnic and religious backgrounds enjoy full freedom to establish and engage in their own clubs, organizations, schools and places of worship. They are also free to preserve and teach their languages. This tradition of tolerance and respect for diversity has long been defining characteristic of Hashemite Jordan, contributing to a stable social fabric for the nation. Uh, the people of Jordan cherished as the country's most precious asset are eager to share their hospitality, rich culture, stunning landscapes uh, with visitors. From strolling through olive groves to visiting magnificent mosques and ancient churches, or tracing Lawrence of Arabia's camel tracks in Wadi Rum sands. 
Jordan offers an environment where lifestyles sp spanning thousands of years coexist harmon harmoniously. The genuine warmth and hospitality experienced within a Boudouin uh, tent in the desert epitomize the authentic spirit of Jordan. All right. <clears throat> Religion. So Jordan blending modernity, modernity with ancient culture offers visitors the opportunity to traverse valleys, hills, and plains steeped in historical significance. These landscapes have been graced by the footsteps of prophets whose simple acts and profound messages have left an indelible, indelible mark on human history. Many sites associated with these prophets where miracles are believed to have taken place or where they are interacted with ordinary people, have been identified, excavated, and preserved, making them readily accessible to visitors. For those in pursuit of cultural enlightenment and spiritual enrichment, Jordan stands as an ideal destination. The country cherishes its diverse ethnic and religious populace, um, ensuring the cultural rights of all citizens. This ethos of tolerance and appreciation forms a cornerstone of Jordanian society, fostering a stable and harmonious cultural environment. With over 92% of the population identifying as Muslims and approximately 6% as Christians, Jordan reflects its rich religious diversity, contributing to its cultural uh, tapestry. <clears throat> All right, Islam, Ramadan, uh, um, observed in the ninth month of the Islamic uh, calendar, entails fasting for Muslims, abstaining from eating, drinking, smoking, and excessive indulgence. Traditionally, Muslims partake in a pre-fast meal, suhur, before dawn and break their fast of iftar after sunset, often starting with dates and sharing a meal with family. Ayyad al-Fitr, marking the end of the Ramadan, holds significant, significant cultural importance in the region. Here are some important Islamic sites in Jordan your clients will not want to miss. So again, maybe want to take a picture of these. al Husseini Mosque Mosque, located a brief walk from the Roman theater in downtown Amman, is the al Husseini Mosque. Reconstructed in 1924 in the Ottoman architectural style, it was commissioned by the late King Ab Abdullah bin al Hussein, the founder of modern Jordan. This mosque stands on the grounds of an earlier structure dating back to 640 AD, originally built by Umar bin al Khattab, the second caliph of Islam. <laughs> All right, King Abdul, uh, Abdullah Mosque. In downtown Amman, uh, visitors can explore the contemporary King Abd Abdullah Mosque, a noteworthy sight to see, recognized as the Blue Dome Mosque due to its striking sky blue exterior. It was constructed in 1990 as a tribute to the late King Abd um, Abdullah bin Al Hussein. King Hussein bin Tala Mosque. Recent addition to Amman skyline is the King Hussein bin Hala Mosque. Unveiled in April 2006, this architectural gem seamlessly blends Umahad inspired design with practically an innovation, uh, pra practicala pra practicality and innovation, a feature often lacking in contemporary places of worship. Positioned atop the scenic rolling hills overlooking the King Hussein's <clears throat> gardens, the mosque offers breathtaking views of the vibrant city below. Abu Darish Mosque, <clears throat> situated atop a hill at the Al Afreshia area of Amman. Abu Darish Mosque stands as one of the city's prominent landmarks. Constructed in 1962, this mosque showcases a unique blend of Mamluk and Ottoman architectural styles. Its striking exterior features alternating black and white stone courses, adding to its visual appeal and distinctiveness. Over the years, Abu Darish Mosque has become renowned for its architectural uh, beauty and cultural significance within the community. And then Aqaba Sharif Hussein bin Ali Mosque. The mosque was named after Hussein bin Ali, who was the Sharif and Emir of Mecca from 1908 until 1917, known as the initiator of the Arab revolt. Al-Sharif Hussein bin Ali stood against the increasingly nationalist Ottoman Empire during the course of the First World War. <sighs> All right. Here are some important Islamic sites in Jordan that your clients will not want to miss. Continued. Abu Darish Mosque, situated atop a hill in the Al-Ashariah area of Amman. 
Uh, Abu Dharish Mosque stands as one of the city's prominent landmarks. Constructed in 1962, this mosque showcases a blend of Mamrak and its striking exterior features, black and white stone courses, adding to the visual appeal and distinctiveness. Over the years, Abu Dharish Mosque has become renowned for its architectural beauty, cultural significance within the community. Aqaba Sharif Hussein bin Ali Mosque. The mosque was named after Hussein bin Ali, who was a Sharif and Amar of Mecca from 1908 until 1917, known as the initiator of the Arab revolt. Ars Hussein bin Ali stood against the increasingly nationalist Ottoman Empire during the course of the First World War. Did you know the name Hashem is actually that of Qasai's grandson, who was the great grandfather of the Prophet Muhammad? The Hashemites are thus the direct descendants of the Prophet through his daughter, Fatima, Fatima, and her husband, Ali bin Abi Talib, who was also the Prophet's paternal first cousin and fourth Talib of Islam. Did you know that? I didn't. <laughs> Christianity, Jordan holds immense significance for Christians globally as a part of the Holy Land. Numerous biblical events and miracles are associated with Jordan. Highlighted by the visits of Pope John Paul II in 2000, notably captured at Mount Nebo and Pope Benedict the uh, 16th, is that? 2009, as part of the journeys to the Holy Land. Here are some important Christian sites in Jordan that should be part of your client's trip to Jordan. Um, Umkays. <clears throat> in this remarkable Roman city, which commands views of the Tiberias Lake and the Sea of Galilee, Jesus conveyed teachings about the kingdom of God and performed miracles, including the well-known Gadarene swine miracle. Madaba, city of mosaics. Madaba boasts the earliest surviving religious map of the Holy Land, dating back to the 6th century. Housed within um, the Greek Orthodox Church, the mosaic map is remarkably well-preserved and a must-see attraction. Jirash, renowned as the most intact and well-preserved Greco-Roman city in the Middle East, Jirash features a fountain where Byzantine residents once annually commemorated Jesus' miracle of turning water into wine. King's Highway recognizes the world's oldest continuously utilized communication route. The King's Highway historically connected ancient regions such as Bashan, Gilead, Amman in the north with Moab, Edom, Paran, and Midian in the south. All right. Uh, here are some important Christian sites in Jordan that you should be a part of your trip. Anjara, ancient town where Jesus, his mother Mary, and his disciples passed through and rested in a nearby cave. Tel Mar Elias, um, a holy land, a holy site visited by prominent figures such as Moses, Elijah, John the Baptist, and Jesus at various points throughout history. Bethany beyond the Jordan. It was um, <clears throat> here that Jesus first prayed to God, gathered his disciples, and launched his public ministry. For almost 2,000 years, this area, which extends along the east bank of the Jordan River, opposite Jer um, Jer Jericho, 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 has been known to be the place where Jesus Christ was baptized by John. In 1996, stunning archaeological discoveries identified the exact site where John had been living and carrying out his baptisms. As Bethany beyond the Jordan, Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptized in the early days. John 1040. Kind of interesting, right? Mount Nebo, uh, from its windswept vantage points overlooking the Dead Sea, the Jordan River Valley, Jericho, and the distant hills of Jerusalem, Mount Nebo provided Moses with a view of the Holy Land of Canaan. It is also widely uh, believed to be his burial place. Uh, Mukarur, it was here at, his tilltop, at this hilltop fortified palace overlooking the Dead Sea region and the distant hills of Palestine and Israel that Herod Antipas the son of Herod, imprisoned and beheaded John the Baptist. To learn more, visit the site um, holylandjordan.com slash English. Did you know Jordan's distinct climatic regions and diverse geographical landscapes create a spectrum of wildlife habitats, most now protected by the Royal Society of the Conservation of Nature, RSCN? The RCN is a non-governmental -gov organization devoted to the conservation of Jordan's natural environment, and since 1966, it has been charged with protecting the country's wildlife and wild places. You can find links to RSCN's nature reserves in Jordan at 
www.rscn.org.joe. Pretty interesting, right? <clears throat> Which mosque in Amman is known for its striking sky blue exterior and was constructed as a tribute to the late King Abdullah bin Al Hussein? Is it the King Abdullah Mosque, the King yes. Hussein, or the? It's Abdullah? the first one. First one. Thank you. What ancient city commands views of the Tiberius Lake, Sea of Galilee, and is associated with Jesus' teachings and miracles? Madaba, Amkes, Anjara. I think it's the I think it, I think it's the Umkes. I uh, I think so. Umkes. Yep. Yeah. Umkes. You guys got that? All right. Next, what important Christian site is in Jordan is believed to be the place where Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist? Anjara, Telmar Elias, or Bethany beyond the Jordan? Bethany, Bethany beyond, beyond the, the Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. Yep. And then which mosque in Aqaba is named after the initiator of the Arab revolt against the Ottoman Empire? King Abdullah uh, Mosque, Sharif Hussein bin Al Mosque, Abu Darish Mas. Sharif was Sharif. That's Sharif. Sharif. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, guys, you're doing great. All right. Um. <clears throat> so, uh, Christine's working on my list for next month. She said she can't find anything for just cabin. So, if anybody finds a training for that, let me know so we can add it to our schedule. All right, now we're going to learn about the geography. All right. So geographically situated in the western part of Asia, Jordan is often recognized as lying at the heart of the Middle East. It shares its northern boundary with Syria and Iraq to the northeast, <clears throat> Saudi Arabia to the southeast, and Palestine and Israel to the west. Jordan's only coastline lies along the Red Sea, assessed via the southern port city of Aqaba. The capital, Amman, is nestled in the country's northwest region. Although predominantly a desert nation, Jordan's northwest corner boasts fertile lands, forming part of the Levant and historically rich fertile crescent, an area heralded as the birthplace of civilizations. Jordan's topography is categorized into following distinct regions, each characterized by unique landscapes and hydrographic elements. So you have the highlands, slender plateau stretches between the lush Jordan Valley in the west and arid expanses of the eastern desert. Highlands traverse the country from north to south, culminating near the Gulf of Aqaba. The, this region is distinguished by a series of petite hills, meandering valleys, and steep gorges. Notably, the southern part of the highlands is celebrated for its magnificent wadis or valleys. These ge geological formations comprising resonant um, canyons and period periodically filled riverbeds come to life with rain water following substantial rainfall. You have the desert. Lying to the east of the highlands is the desert region known for its minimal precipitation often receiving less than two inches of rain annually. Despite the harsh climate and the sparsity of urban centers, this part of Jordan is home to an impressive selection of desert fortresses and is the site of two of the country's most splendid nature reserves. Uh, Jordan's to topography is categorized in the following distinct regions, each characterized by landscapes and hydrographic elements. Uh, Jordan Valley spanning approximately 14 miles across uh, Jordan's western frontier, adjacent to the east of the Jordan River. This fertile expanse is a segment of the vast Great Rift Valley, world's longest rift extending about 3,000 miles from the southwestern part of Syria to Mozambique in Africa, sorry. Section of the Great Rift Valley that lies within Jordan, stretching down to the Dead Sea, is popular, popularly referred to as Jordan Valley or the East Bank. Um, water. Jordan's coastal gem, the Red Sea, graces the country's southern extremity with a coastline stretching approximately 17 miles leading to the northern tip of the sea itself, fringed by scenic mountains overlooking the Gulf of Aqaba, 
This area is also uh, where you find the charming city of Aqaba as the nation's sole port and a bustling seaside city. Aqaba is a magnet for maritime activity and preferred destination for tourists all year round. Hey there, I'm gonna be out of town on the 27th and 28th. Sorry. I'm gonna be out of town on the 27th and 28th. Okay, sorry guys. <clears throat> All right, equally distinctive is the Dead Sea, the lowest point of the surface of the earth and more akin to a lake than a sea. Its waters supplied by the Jordan River and having no exit route evaporate under the scorching sun, leaving behind a salt concentration that is about 30%, approximately seven times saltier than ordin ordinary seawater. This extreme salt salinity creates an environment where life cannot thrive, hence its name, the Dead Sea, renowned for the natural buoyancy afforded by the dense waters and for the therapeutic qualities of its mineral-laden mud, has been a center of wellness tourism since antiquity. Uh, today, it continues to attract those seeking restorative experiences, as well as being a favored location for international conferences and events supported by its excellent hospitality infrastructure. All right, UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Jordan. You have Petra, Baptism Site, Wadi Rum, Asalt, Quasar Amra, and Um Al Rasas. Hold on. Hey there, I told everybody we do it on Saturday for Marriott's. Please. Sorry. All right, Jordan Trail um, is a long distance hiking trail in Jordan connecting the length of Jordan from Amkas in the north to Aqaba in the south, offering 40 days of hiking over more than 675 kilometers of trail and traveling through 70 Five villages and towns on its way. The trail traverses the diverse landscapes and vistas of the country from the rolling wooded hills of the north and rugged wadis and cliffs overlooking the Jordan Rift Valley. Those, um, the Rose Rock of Petra, the dramatic sounds, uh, sands and towering mountains in Wadi Rum to the crystal waters of the Red Sea. To learn more about Jordan Trail, visit the link here. Pro tip, purchase the Jordan Pass, save time, money, and effort for only $100. Hassle-free entry to over 40 of Jordan's tourist attractions, including Petra, Jerush, um, <clears throat> uh, Wadi Rum, and much more. The cost of your tourist uh, entry visa is included in the pass, pass and downloadable, um, free downloadable digital brochures covering all of Jordan's tourist attractions. Sorry, trying to multitask here. All right, what are the three main outdoor activities mentioned for adventure seekers in Jordan? Hiking, surfing, bird watching, hiking, cycling, camping, or surfing, scuba diving, and skiing. No recall. Hiking, cycling, and camping. That's right, hiking, cycling, and camping. Jordan's only coastline lies along which body of water? The Red Sea. Red Sea, correct. What's the name of Jordan's southern port city? Southern. Uh, Agaba. Very good. Which is not a UNESCO World Heritage Site? The Red Sea. Red Sea, correct. All right, guys, one more. Everybody good? Get her done, right? Yeah. Last one. Are you guys learning a lot? Anybody ready to go to Jordan? I'd love to go do the Holy Land tour and stuff. That'd be kind of cool, right? Heck yeah. That'd be very cool. Yeah. That'd be very cool. Yes. And we can go hit a safari while we're down there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Dead Sea, <laughs> go sit in that. Oh, look, Sonia's going next April. How fun. Are you doing a tour or are you doing on your own? See, that's what's also cool about doing these because, you know, again, she could tour. Yeah, very nice. Um, yeah, like when we go, we're doing the the package with Coach Val to Thailand and Singapore next month. So Linda and I are going on that. So um, we're excited. Hope, hopefully we'll make it back. <laughs> oh my goodness. You will. 
we just we, we just got okay. a we just got the notice of the plane ticket to get back. We were kind of stuck for a while there. We we're like, ah, uh, my sister goes every year to Thailand. She's a um a doctor in um uh physical therapy, and they do a a mission trip every year um, right after Christmas for two weeks in Thailand. So I thought, well, I'll just wait for her over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Unveiling the best outdoor experiences and cultural treasures. So Jordan is a captivating destination renowned for its natural beauty, rich history, and diverse culture. Whether you're an adventurer seeking outdoor thrills or a culture enthusiast wanting to delve into ancient traditions, Jordan has something to offer for everyone. Let's journey through some of the best outdoor activities and cultural experiences Jordan has to offer. So you have um, outdoor adventures. So again, take pictures of these guys to share with your certificate that you're going to get today. Hiking in Jordan. Jordan's landscapes are a hiker's paradise featuring towering mountains, rolling hills, rugged canyons, expansive deserts, popular hiking destinations, which include Dana Biosphere Reserve. This area boasts a variety of ecosystems from sandstone cliffs to lush valleys offering trails for all skill levels. Wadi Rum, known as the Valley of the Moon. <clears throat> this desert landscape provides a sur surre surreal, surre never right, right, sur surreal backdrop for adventurous heights. Petra, beyond its famous archaeological sites, Petra offers numerous trails, including challenging but rewarding climb to the monas monastery. Cycling in Jordan. Um, cyclists will find Jordan equally enchanting with scenic routes ranging from easy rides to demanding climbs. Highlights include Kings Highway, historic route that offers a blend of challenging terrain, stunning views as it winds through mountains and desert landscapes. Mount Nebo and Madaba. These areas combine historical exploration with cycling, offering a journey through ancient sites and modern towns. Camping in Jordan. Camping in Jordan allows travelers to immerse themselves fully in the country's natural beauty. Top camping spots include Wadi Rum, spend the night under the stars in the desert, experiencing the tranquility and the vastness of this unique landscape. Dana Biosphere Reserve. Camp amidst diverse wildlife and picturesque scenery, perfect for nature lovers. The Red Sea, enjoy beachside camping with opportunities for diving, snorkeling, and crystal clear waters. Other ecotourist um, activities. Jordan's ecotourism offers or extends beyond hiking, cycling, and camping. Adventure seekers can enjoy scuba diving in the Red Sea, explore vibrant coral reefs, abundant marine life, rock climbing and canyoning. Test your skills on Jordan's rugged cliffs and canyons. Desert safaris experience a thrill of exploring Jordan's vast deserts from camel rides to four by fours. Embracing uh, Jordan's cultural heritage, Al Asrak, a hub of cultural diversity. So located, located in Eastern Jordan, Al Asrak is a melting pot of cultures, showcasing the rich heritage of various ethnic groups. Bedouin, Bedouin, Bedouin uh, culture known for their nomadic lifestyle. The Bedouin's um, influence is seen in Al Asrak's traditional architecture and customs, their distinctive Clothing and intricate jewelry pro pro provide a glimpse into their rich heritage. Jersey culture. The Jersey people are celebrated for their oral um, history and traditional weaving techniques. Visitors can learn about their unique way of life and artisanal skills. Uh, Chechen culture. Roots in the North Caucasus. The Chechens have brought um, their vibrant traditions to al Asra. Um, including captivating music, dance, and cuisine. Again, I apologize for the mispronunciation. Uh, just 30 minutes from Amman, Al Salt offers blend of historical exploration and outdoor activities. Old city tour, wander through narrow, narrow streets lined with traditional homes, shops, and ancient ruins. Key sites include Al Qadar Church, one of the oldest churches in the region. Museums and galleries visit the Al Salt Museum and Al Jabbar Museum to dive deep into the his city's history and cultural heritage. Hiking, enjoy hikes in the rolling hills surrounding Al Salt, offering breathtaking views and connection to nature. <clears throat> Local experiences and gastronomy. Now for your foodies. Traveling from farm to fork in Jordan is an intrepid, um, intrepid journey to eat, eat good and do good. 
with your tourism dollars while discovering the seasonality and diverse microclimates of the relatively young Arab country with surprisingly rich food culture. Whether you're into earth-friendly food tours to beekeepers maintaining biodiversity in the north or foraging for wild medicinal herbs and edible flowers on an eco hike, Jordan has it. For adventurous foodies looking to immerse in desert life, there's an ancient Bedouin smoky flavored lamb dish called Zarb, slow cooked in a hot coal oven, buried in the sand to sink your teeth in while stargazing in one of the Wadi Rum luxury camps. In the South, seafood lovers feast on the freshest tuna and grouper caught by local fishermen in the Red Sea. Served in the back streets of the coastal Aqaba. So, and suppose you're more into cosmopolitan dining. In that case, there is a thriving restaurant and lounge scene in Eclectic Amman. Uh, with a growing collection of rooftop venues, as well as cleverly designed farm-to-table restaurants that source their products from local organic farmers. Restaurants and hotels throughout Jordan are gradually innovating um, the country's food culture, joining the worldwide snobilization, snobilization movement towards a genuine food identity with local sustainability and community-based gastronomy. In this lesson, you will learn a brief overview from past to present that makes Jordan a meaningful food destination. <clears throat> 6,000 year old olive culture. Bread is gold, says three-star celebrity chef Ma Massim Ma Massimo, Massimo Futura. And so travelers with an appetite for food history love discovering that the world's oldest evidence of bread making dates back to 14,000 years ago at an old Tatafian site in Jordanian des desert. Healthy food lovers risk turning into tree huggers once they learn that the oldest olive trees dating back to the time of Jesus Christ still exist today. The cultural significance of olive oil runs deep and has been used for food, medicine, beauty treatments for over 6,000 years. To date, Jordan is the eighth largest producer of olives in the world. As the world's second driest country, it's almost contradictory to the fact that Jordan has such a rich food culture and trend with the expectations, expectations of intrepid food travelers. And then again, Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan is full of multi-layered contrasts in the landscape and people, its heritage and its modern friendly culture, contrasts which inevitably end up on the menu, onto your plate. Although a young country that celebrated its centennial in 2021, Jordan's DNA is influenced by several major cultures that ruled the Levant over the past 5,000 years. From the ancient Egyptians to the Nabataean kingdom who controlled the trade routes and built the water irrigation system for agriculture in Petra. While the next four centuries were ruled by the Roman Empire, followed by the Byzantine and the Umayyad empires, and in the 16th century by the Ottoman Empire, under Ottoman rule, Arab Badu Baduine um, tribes from Syria and the Hejaz moved into the region and was then known as Transjordan. And in the late 19th century, people from the Caucasus, um, Caucasus fled to the Ottoman Empire to escape from the Caesarist Russia. The hub for Middle Eastern cuisine. So modern Jordan is bordered by the Red Sea in the south, Saudi Arabia in the south, southeast, Iraq in the northeast, Syria in the north, and Palestine in the west by the Jordan River. The country is positioned at the crossroads of Asia, Africa, and Europe, which explains the eclectic nature of Jordan's culture. The country is known as the oasis of safety and stability and has been on the international tourism map for decades as a heritage destination. Fast forward to today, you'll soon discover Jordan is not just about history, but also a culinary hub where the best of modern Middle Eastern cuisine comes together at the table with influences from not only Bedouin, Yemeni, Egyptian, Syrian, um, uh, Ira Iraqi, uh, Palestinian cuisines, but also from the Circus Circassians, Shashans, Druze, and Armenians. It's no wonder that many Jordanians menus serve culture on your plate. All right, food city Amman. This capital of Jordan is one of the world's oldest continuously inhabited cities. In contrast, Amman is also one of the most modern cosmopolitan cities in the Arab world worth food exploring for good week. If you want to savor most of the city's multicultural cuisines, 
Most people characterize Jordan's food culture as Levantine cuisine, which covers the um, Eastern Mediterranean area, including Cyprus, Lebanon, Palestine, Israel, Syria, parts of Southern Turkey, and Jordan. Bakralden Restaurant is a leading restaurant serving delicious Lebanese food developed from Levantine cuisine with authentic Arabic grills, seafood, and traditional Middle Eastern appetizers. A must-try dish in Kubadnaya, an Arabic, Arabic steak tartar with minced raw meat and bulgar. Mixed at the table with a flavorful garlic yogurt sauce, the restaurant has its own organic herb garden and is nestled in a beautiful mansion built and owned by one of the prime ministers of Jordan during the 20th century's golden era. Um, another authentic dining experience is Khan Zaman at Airport Road, offering local cuisine, art, music, and culture. Smaller but exciting new venue is Hazora, serving authentic Middle Eastern flavors located in the boulevard in Abdali. Amen's newest part of the town with a string of other restaurants and bars and a modern shopping mall, all within walking distance. Jordanian cuisine on the rise. While Levantine cuisine colors most of Jordan's culinary landscape, there are pioneering restaurant owners who began searching for more national food identity by putting authentic Jordanian dishes on the food map. One of those pioneers is Jordan Heritage Restaurant, JHR, with venues in Amman and Assam. JHR spent five years researching national food identity, documented more than 90 authentic local dishes and 11 distinct flavors of Jordanian cuisine, reflecting the diversity and richness of the country's cultural and climate landscapes from all the 12 governments. JHR also empowers women-owned micro-businesses by sourcing all of its key ingredients from their mostly home-based businesses in nine different governates. Um, some of the H JHR's uh, authentic recipes include an appetizer dish from Urbid in the north called Kebab Abedat, a blend of fried lamb with bulgur wheat and cardamom. Another northern dish is Gras Sabanak, an almost street food like savory pie stuffed with cooked spinach, pomegranate, pearls, onions, and sumac. Sumac is a ground auburn red berry with slightly acidic flavor used extensively in Jordanian dishes. Then there's Vartin Aubergine, an Armenian oven-cooked eggplant dish with bell peppers, fresh tomato, and an ancient dish from Navatan area called Ristaya, an appetizer of fettuccine served with a lentil stew. Interestingly, Zatar and Circassian cheese salad is a cultural fusion between an original thyme salad from Madaba with artisanal cheese from a neighboring Circassian community in Nara. <clears throat> All right, local sourcing community engagement. Another restaurant preserving local cuisine is Safra in Rainbow Street. Serves a variety of Jordanian homemade dishes. Shams Al Badad is a hotspot farm to table restaurant in Jabal Amman area with a particular focus on local sourcing, seasonality, and sustainability. Shams Al Balad connects the food heritage of Palestine and Jordan, works with local farmers, producers, and artisans like Mujab Organic Farms and Shepherds in Macarius. Their olive oil is from Jordanian producers only, and their kamaj bread and manishish pizza like bread are made of local flour from the north of Jordan. Another special spot is Wild Jordan Center, a mindful concept by the Royal Society for the Conservation of Nature and operated by the Atiko Group of Restaurants. With fantastic views overlooking the Citadel, Wild Jordan aims to produce an income for the rural communities of eight reserves in Jordan, protected by the same RSCN that also runs projects in organic farming, biodiversity, sustainability, sustainable use, and conservation of herbal medicinal plants and development of ecotourism. Four seasons and microclimates. One of the most beautiful contrasts you'll find on your plate is the reflection of the seasonality and the diverse microclimates of Jordan. Traveling for food in the north will bring you to Amkes, known as the home of poets and philosophers, where you can immerse in a community experience learning how to cook local recipes at Galsam's Kitchen. Operated by Raraka Destinations, environmentally conscious foodies go eco-hiking in urban, and Mafrak Plateau is perfect for visiting Olive Farm. Although deserts, um, 
Deserts cover nearly 90% of the country. You'll find green farmlands in the Jordan Valley, fertile oasis in towns like Azraq and Rusrad, um, mineral water springs with seasonal water streams in Mayan and Afra, and salt plains on the southern end of the Dead Sea in Kara. Towards the south, you can enjoy candlelit dinners at the famous Petra site and under the stars at Wadi Rum. Divers, beach wanderers, and seafood lovers can't miss a food trip to the Aqaba by the Red Sea. All right, responsible gastronomy global trend. When discovering Jordan through food, uh, you'll find that the culinary landscape is emerging as a destination where chefs, restaurants, and farmers recognize the importance of sustainability of local food supply chains and culinary identity. A growing trend can be seen worldwide. In a recent article, the world's 50 best restaurants, the organization recognizes the significant role restaurants and bars can play in leading the movement towards a more sustainable way of living. With the help of Food Made Good Global, which has been auditing the Sustainable uh, Restaurant and Bar Awards since 2013, 50 Best identified some of the ways chefs can become more plant-friendly and healthier by following the example of the world's leading chefs on topics that make the kitchen more sustainable with the nine simple tips, such as making vegetables the star of the dish, adopting zero waste and low food miles ethos, adopting circularity principles of buying more locally, sourcing the farm fresh produce okay, that is okay. organic, seasonal, healthy, GMO free, and supportive of the biodiversity. Other influential ah. global movements on sustainable our, um, agriculture and healthy gastronomy include slow food travel and blue zones project, the new sustainability emblem of Michelin Guide and UNESCO's Sustainable Gastronomy Day, looking at global uh, culinary trends across the globe. There is also a growing number of world-class chefs, culinary associations, hotel chains, and restaurants who are leading the way in promoting healthy, planet-friendly, and sustainable cooking. Regional cuisine um, with a high sense of purpose and stewardship, Jordan is following that trend in the Arabic world, making the cuisine and the culture worth traveling to. <clears throat> All right, we're on our last one. All As um, Asraq in Jordan is a hub for cultural diversity, which three ethnic groups are highlighted in their cultural contributions? Bedouins, Durzis, Shechens, Jordan, Jordanians, Palestinians, Syrians, Egyptians, Lebanese, Iraq, Iraqis. It's the Bedouins. That's what I thought. That Thank one. You. Yep. Which of the following activities can you experience at the Dana Biosphere Reserve? Scuba diving, surfing, skiing, or hiking and camping? Hiking and camping. Very good. What significant food culture element is celebrated by the Jordan Heritage Restaurant? International, fast food, or local Jordanians? The local Jordanian. And which Jordanian city is renowned for its blend of historical exploration, modern outdoor activities, including visiting Al Qadar Church and hiking? Aqaba, Al no. Aqaba. It's the Isle of Salt, the, that one. Very good. All right, guys. So congratulations. Everybody hopefully passed. You can print your certificate right here. You just pop on it. It should also, I think, send on an email. Look at that. Beautiful. Pretty, right? Download it. What a post cute it. One. Let people know that you are now a Jordan specialist. Do those Holy Land tours. Get those... Um, uh, divers out there, those foodies, right? So you can focus on how many different people. So, um, you know, again, congratulations, everybody. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you had fun. Um, where are my certificate folder? All right, you're welcome, guys. So again, um, right? appreciate you guys hanging out with us today. So thank you, thank you. Um, I had a certificate folder, I lost it. Um, certificates right there. Blah. Save. Okay. All right. So thank you. Um, let's see if she answered me yet. On which three did you want for this month? Oh. I was just pulling that as of the training yesterday. Um, look at the specials underneath and maybe we can base it based on those. 
sorry, I'm in the training right now for Jordan. All right. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate you. Again, uh, teamwork makes a great Thank you, Marnie. Right? So um, hopefully we'll see you next week. We're doing uh, Windstar Cruises and the Bahamas. Again, make sure you pre-register, okay? The links are right up here. Um, I also send them out, um, you know, um, the night before, okay? So um, have an amazing weekend, everybody. And thank you for joining me today. And as we say, you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And if we don't see you at the beaches of the world, we'll see you at the bank. Bye, guys. Good morning. Is Windstar a new one um, that you're like doing on Fridays or whatever? I haven't even looked at. Uh, so... Let's see. I don't know if we did it or not already. Oh, yeah. So it's August 30th on Friday. So is Windstar like going to be in depth like a lot of the other cruise lines? Um, again, I don't know till we usually get okay. into it. So, okay. um, current courses. So well, you can go, I can go check it out. I just, yeah, select a category. Them. So they have the ships. We'll just look real quick. They've got okay. sailing ships too. It's a cool course. I don't think we've done it before. Okay. Oh, good. I'm excited. We haven't done any cruises yeah. lately. And then what yeah. are you doing on Princess? Are you doing the whole thing over or are you doing just updates? Because For what? On, on Princess? Are you just doing updates or are you starting Princess over? No, I'm, I'm Princess we just did. Sorry. Right. So, excuse me, but you just did something on Princess. Princess Hotels. Oh. Yeah, Princess Hotels. They're in uh, Punta Cana and um, and uh, it's right here, Punta Cana and um, uh, Riviera Maya. Oh, okay. Yeah, this so one. We just did this a... yesterday, so I'll be downloading it. Okay, so that was different than, I thought that was like maybe the cruises or something, because we had just yeah. done Princess. Nope, okay. it's, yep, it's this, so. Okay. Um, I'll so do I'll download that, that and you can catch it if you didn't do it yeah. yesterday. So I'll be posting that and then this one today. Okay. All right. Well, I'll look forward to what's coming up. I'm definitely going to sign up for Windstar. Yeah. And then... yeah, it looks like Windstar may be a long one. So um, I may have to tell her we may need to move that into. So we may be doing Windstar through September and Marriott through September. <laughs> so we'll see. Okay. And then Marriott is for everybody who hasn't done Marriott. Has it. It's brand new. Yes. Yeah, okay, because I did marry up pretty much on my own, but I'm going to go back and see if there's anything I need to update or miss. Thank you. You're welcome. So, yeah, if you need to do the updates, the updates are in here um, for Marriott, but this is for brand new. We try to do it at least once a year for any brand new agents. So, mm -hmm. um, but if you have to do updates like 2024 updates, we did that. Yeah, um, I did that with you. Yeah. So, okay. All right, All right well, guys. You next week. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You too. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank